Hello there friendly neighbors and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing the very first video in a series that I'm going to be doing all about ferret kibble and commercial ferret food and helping to figure out what sort of food you should be feeding your ferrets. Today's video is just going to be a sort of introduction to the series and I'm going to be going over just a little bit of the basics of ferret nutrition as well as some of the rules that I think you should be following if you are someone who is planning to feed your ferrets a commercial ferret food. If you are someone who is looking to feed your ferrets a new type of kibble or you want to see if the type of kibble you are feeding is appropriate for ferrets, please make sure to watch the other videos in this series as well as this one. I have a lot of information to go over which is why I'm making this a series and because of that you can't really just take one video and apply just that. You really need the context of the entire series. So that's a disclaimer that's going to be on every single one of my videos just to make sure that I really get the point across. So let's talk a little bit about this series and why I am doing it. I get a lot of messages on Instagram and in my Discord server about what type of kibble ferrets should be fed. If you are someone who has messaged me on Instagram about that particular topic, I never replied to you. And I'm really sorry about that, but at the same time, I don't think I should be apologizing because that's not fair for me. I'm Canadian and a woman, so that means that I apologize like six times as much as the average person. And I don't need to do that much apologizing. The reason I didn't reply to your Instagram message is because I didn't know. It's been a long time since I fed my ferrets kibble, and even back when I was feeding them kibble, it was not a good kibble. I saw a picture of a ferret on a bag and I assumed that that meant that it was perfectly safe for ferrets and it was fine. This was at a time in my life where I hadn't done enough research on ferret ownership. It's a big mistake that I made when I first adopted ferrets and it's one of the main reasons that I was inspired to start my YouTube channel because I want to stop people from making that same mistake. Right, Luna? Right. So, since I did not know what to tell people, and I continually felt bad for the fact that I didn't know what to tell people, I've spent the last couple weeks doing some pretty extensive research so that I can now know what to tell people. And that's what this series is for. Every Friday for the next couple weeks, I am going to be releasing a 10 to 20 minute video having to do with something in the world of commercial ferret food and kibble. The reason I'm breaking it up like this is because there is just so much information to go over and there are so many things that I need to say, I couldn't put it into one video. And if I did, that would mean that I would have to cut out significant chunks of information that I really don't want to cut out, or it would just be really, really long and really really boring, okay? I already talk too much. You don't need to hear me do it for like two hours. Unless you're watching all these videos back to back, in which case you are about to hear me do it for about two hours. And at that point, I would just like to say, you're a very strong person. Throughout this video, I'm just gonna be putting down guidelines and things that I would be considering when it comes to picking a commercial ferret food for my ferrets, if that was the road that I was taking when it came to their nutrition. I have a lot of things to go over, from ingredients you should be avoiding, to how to make sense of a guaranteed analysis, to how to read a pet food bag. There's a lot of stuff. The one thing that I am not going to be telling you guys is the name of a brand that you should be feeding. I have two main reasons as to why I don't want to be giving brand names. The first reason is that I don't know every brand of food that exists, and I never will. You might live in a place that has this amazing food that is so good for ferrets, but I just don't know that it exists. So by me telling you, hey, this is the brand that you should be feeding, you might never become aware of this brand of food that is super great. And to sort of branch off of that, there might be a brand of food that comes out next month that is amazing for ferrets. And by me saying, oh, this is the brand that you should be feeding, you're not going to become aware of this brand that has just come out because you're not going to be looking for it because you're already going to think that you're feeding the best food possible. The second and more important reason of why I don't want to just give you the food that you should be feeding your ferrets is, in my opinion, if I just hand you on a silver platter the answer to the very important question that you are asking, I feel like it discredits your ability to do your own research. By conducting your own research and looking at brands in your area, you're going to be more confident in the decision that you've made, and you're going to be able to look at this food and list exactly all of the reasons as to why you picked this food, why you think it's the best option for your ferrets, and why you like it. As opposed to me saying, hey, just feed this food, you're gonna just be like, okay. And then what? Why are you feeding this food? Because I told you to? Don't do things because I tell you to do them. I do stupid shit all the time. I walked into my table this morning, just walked right into it. I knew it was there, but I still did it. You gonna walk into your table because that's what I did? Don't do it, it really hurt. I'm bruised now. My leggy hurts. 
don't, don't let your leggy hurt. Like I said earlier, I don't feed my ferrets kibble or a commercial diet. My ferrets are raw fed. I switched my ferrets to a raw diet about two years ago and I am super happy with my decision and it's something that I'm very likely never gonna go back on unless some serious health complications happens. I, you know, I can't tell the future and if I could, that'd be cool. Am I ever gonna make it? Where am I in five years? Do I find love? It is my personal opinion that the raw diet is best, and ferrets, in my experience, do better on a raw diet. The differences that I saw in my girls from when they were on kibble to when they were on raw is just black and white. They are significantly different ferrets. They're healthier, their coats are shinier, their teeth are better, and I'm just generally really happy for my decision to switch to a raw diet. So because of that, I'm always gonna advocate for a raw diet above a commercial ferret food. But... I don't think that everyone should feed their ferrets a raw diet. There are so many reasons that are completely valid as to why someone should not be feeding a raw diet. I go into more detail about my opinions on this in my video where I go over my unpopular ferret care opinions, so feel free to go watch that video if you want to hear me ramble more about my opinions on the pressure that people have to raw feed. I just think it's stupid and you shouldn't have that pressure. But I did just want to say that so you guys know where I'm coming from as someone who takes care of my ferrets in one way, but I think that it's perfectly acceptable for you to take care of them in a different way because, you know, all ferrets are different. Outside of YouTube, I work in the pet food industry and I have been doing so for about two years now. It has really opened my eyes and humbled me to the world of commercial food. Two years ago, I was of the opinion that everyone should feed raw and if you can't feed your ferrets raw, you shouldn't own ferrets, which is a very extreme opinion and I'm sure I hurt a lot of people by expressing that opinion. By working with commercial food and seeing so many people feed commercial foods and have super healthy pets and just seeing the differences in commercial food brands from quality to ingredients to their effects on each individual animal, it's really opened my eyes to the the possibility of commercial feeding and one of the main reasons why I was inspired to start this series. I really don't know how long this series is going to be. I don't plan things, you know, that much. I have all my information together and I'm just trying to figure out how I want to compile it to make it, you know, make sense. So it could be as little as four videos, but it could be as many as like 10. So I guess you guys will just find out when we get to that point. And my last thing sort of about, you know, this series as a whole is that I will have resources for all of the information that I've gone over in my description. I think proper resourcing is extremely important, which we're gonna talk about right now. I have a few big disclaimers for this entire series that I wanna just put in one place, so I'm gonna say them right now. The first one is that ferret nutrition is extremely understudied. This is something I'm gonna be repeating time and time again throughout the series because it is something that needs to be understood. As of right now, when I am filming this video, there are no conclusive and scientific studies that prove the exact nutritional requirements that ferrets need. We do have several scientific studies that compare them to dogs and cats and by using those studies we can make a couple of guesses about their exact nutritional requirements. Because of that every piece of information I'm going to be talking about in this series I am going to be trying my very best to make it as clear as possible what is a fact, what is an opinion, and what is a theory. Having said that, a lot of the theories that I'm about to bring up are very likely true. They're theories because they do have some sort of a scientific backing, they just lack the conclusive scientific evidence to prove them right or wrong. So just because something is a theory doesn't mean that it's necessarily false, it just means that we don't have the backing to say that it's true. I really hope that all of this changes and I'm hopeful that one day we will actually understand significantly more about ferret nutrition and we will have those numbers and we'll be able to conclusively say this is exactly what ferrets need in order to be healthy and in order to grow. And who knows, maybe that study's gonna come out tomorrow. That would be great. I would love for it to come out tomorrow. But as of right now, all we can do is hold each other's hands and guess. So take my hand. We're gonna do some guessing. The last disclaimer that I wanna make is something that I think is very, very important, and that's for me to tell you guys, I am not a vet, I am not a scientist, and I am not a nutritionist. I am just a 25-year-old lady who's got ADHD, who really likes ferrets, and has a problem where I hyper-focus on information gathering and then I don't leave my room for three days um, and my plates just really stack up on my desk. Because all I want to do is read about ferret nutrition. Because I'm not a vet scientist or a nutritionist, it is possible that the things I am telling you guys in this video are going to be disproven or that maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm going to be wrong. There are some opinions that I'm throwing out because there are guesses that we need to make when it comes to ferret nutrition. If that is the case, I'm obviously going to be very open about it because I'm not going to be the type of person that doesn't own up to my mistakes, especially when it's something as important as animal care. You gotta own up to your mistakes, okay? We can do it, guys. I've been wrong before. 
Disclaimers aside, we're gonna just be talking about some of the rules when it comes to picking a kibble for your ferrets, or if you're feeding a commercial diet, some of the rules that I really think you should be abiding by. The first one, which most people are aware of, is that dog food is absolutely not suitable for ferrets. Dog food is significantly higher in filler and carbs. It also doesn't always have extra taurine, which ferrets do need. And dogs are not obligate carnivores, so they don't follow the same dietary needs as ferrets do. Which leads us to the second thing. Cats and ferrets are both obligate carnivores, which means that they can only make use of animal proteins, and it's the only thing that their bodies can actually get nutrients from. Because of that, many ferret owners decide to feed their ferrets a cat or a kitten food because they're much more commercially available and a lot of the time they are better quality than some of the ferret foods you can see sitting on the pet store shelves. But it's important to remember that it's only theoretical that cats and ferrets follow the same nutritional requirements. A study done in 2014 actually proved that ferrets have higher fat digestibility than cats and lower crude protein digestibility than cats. Along with that, ferrets and cats have different transit times. Transit times just refers to how quickly a animal can digest food from when they eat it to when they pass it. Ferrets digest food about three to four times faster than cats, which is pretty significant. The amount of time food stays within the body affects the amount of nutrients that are absorbed through that food. So because of this difference in transit times, we can guess that ferrets actually require more fat and protein than cats do. This is why a lot of people will feed their ferret a kitten food as opposed to a cat food, because kitten foods are higher in both of those things. And keep in mind that there are still a lot of commercial ferret foods available that aren't awful and are actually completely fine, in my opinion, for ferrets. But just because there's a picture of a ferret on the bag does not mean it's one of these foods. I would definitely argue that there are more commercial ferret foods available that are awful for ferrets, especially the ones that you can buy easily at pet stores and God forbid, Walmart. So if you are going for a food that is actually marketed towards ferrets, you still need to go through the process that I'm going to be going over in this series in order to make sure that that food is actually appropriate for ferrets, even though it has a ferret on the back. You still gotta check. All ferrets are different. It's really important to keep that in mind. Because of this, ferrets are gonna react to different foods differently. Age, weight, energy levels, breeding, general health, all of this greatly affects how an individual food is going to treat your ferret differently. If there's a certain food you're trying to get your ferrets into and you just notice it's really not working for them, that's fine. Research again and try and find another brand that you can get them onto. Feeding variety is so important when it comes to commercial foods. In my opinion, ferrets who are eating a commercial food should not be on the same animal protein or the same brand, and you should be switching between different ones. This is referred to as rotational feed which I'm going to be going much more into depth in another video about, but I wanted to put it in my rules just so you know it's one of them. When you are looking at a food to feed your ferrets, you absolutely need to look at both the nutritional analysis and the ingredients list. These two things work together hand in hand and you cannot analyze if food is going to be good without looking at both of them. Again, this is something I'm going to be talking about in much more depth and much more detail in a two future videos. They're each getting their own video because I have a lot to say about both of them. If you are going to be switching the type of food you are feeding your ferrets, absolutely don't give up if they don't like it on the first try. Ferrets are notorious for being extremely picky eaters that imprint on their food and don't like switching what they're eating. The easiest way that you can switch your ferrets to a different food is by doing it slowly and having a lot of patience. Back when I was kibble feeding, I switched my ferrets from one brand to another with relative ease by keeping both of these things in mind. When I switched my girls on the first week, I fed them a quarter of the new food, three quarters of the old food mixed together as well as I could mix it. The second week, we went into a half and half. And then in the third week, we did three quarters of the new food, one quarter of the old food. And in the fourth week, we were fully onto the new food. Doing it slowly like this not only makes it easier because then your ferret is gonna actually be willing to eat the new food, but it's actually also better for their digestive system. In my experience working in the pet food industry, a lot of dogs and cats who have been on the same food for a really long time do struggle going cold turkey onto a new brand of food. Their digestive systems just aren't used to digesting the new food, so you really have to give them time to learn how to do that. So even if your ferret is completely willing to eat a new food right away, I still would recommend taking at least two weeks to switch them onto the new food before you commit to it 100%. And keep in mind, all ferrets are different, so different ferrets are going to need a different transition period. Some ferrets might take as long as two months to go on to a new food, and you might need to start with as small of a ratio as one-eighth the new food and seven-eighths the old food. It really depends on your individual ferret, but like I said, just because they aren't willing to switch right away doesn't mean they'll never be open to the idea, you just gotta take it at their pace. 
a little bit on housekeeping when it comes to kibble feeding. Just because your ferrets are on a kibble or a commercial food does not mean that their dishes are clean. Please make sure you are regularly washing your ferrets dishes. I strongly recommend stainless steel, ceramic, or glass dishes over plastic ones. Plastic dishes just scratch really easily and bacteria loves to grow in those scratches. So if you are someone who has a plastic dish, I would recommend throwing it out and replacing it pretty regularly just to prevent that from happening. Generally speaking, unlike cats and dogs, ferrets don't overeat and they are perfectly fine being free fed. In fact, you should be free feeding your ferrets. Like I said earlier, ferrets digest food extremely quickly and because of this, when ferrets are on a commercial food, they pretty much constantly need to be digesting in order to keep their energy levels up. And in order to constantly be digesting, they need to have food available to them constantly. If you do have a ferret that seems like a huge glutton and refuses to stop eating and is gaining significant amounts of weights, that's something that you should be talking to your vet about and they'll be able to help you figure out how much of the food that you are feeding them they should be eating every single day. But also keep in mind that season plays a huge role in ferrets' weight and activity levels. During winter, ferrets are generally a lot less active and they gain a lot more weight, whereas in spring they tend to shed that winter weight and get a little bit more active. So if you're noticing your ferret gaining a lot of weight and it's fall, don't stress out right away. Definitely keep an eye on it. Keep weighing them every week or so to see how much weight they're gaining. Luna goes from being a little twig to being a thick queen every single year. So I can speak from personal experience that your ferrets are completely different depending on the season. Water. Ferrets need water. As obligate carnivores, in the wild, their ancestors would have gotten a lot of their hydration from the animals that they were eating. When on a commercial diet, your ferrets are going to be eating food that is probably pretty dry. So because of that, it is very, very important that ferrets on a commercial diet have fresh, clean water available to them constantly. I hope that list of rules wasn't too long, but it, it probably was because my notes down on my laptop here, they're pretty long. We have a lot to go over though. That's how this series is gonna be. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. I know this week's video was kind of like all over the place and there wasn't really one strict topic. And that's just because this week's video sort of had to be an intro and I had to just say all the things that I need to say before we dig deep into commercial foods for ferrets and ferret nutrition and all that stuff. So from here on out, the videos are gonna be a little more, you know, focused on an individual target and hopefully a little more entertaining. So I'll be back next Friday with another topic about ferret nutrition and commercial food for ferrets. I'm really excited to get through this series and I'm really hoping that I can at least help someone out there when it comes to the confusing world of commercial foods because it is stressful and it is confusing. You guys have a great week and I will see you next Friday. Bye.